What's up everyone, I'm Calamon Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some battles submitted to the channel by the Black Luffy 92 who's running a triple hyper beam theme team in the Open Master League with Shiny Shadow Mewtwo, Meloetta and Eveltal. As someone that will literally never be able to power up any of these Pokemon, it's cool to see such a unique submission for the Master League. With that being said, let's get into the question of the day. What do you think is the worst thing about the current XL Candy system? Let me know in the comment section down below. And with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle, will he shiny Shadow Mewtwo into a Zacian? So a fairly neutral lead matchup here. The opponent is running Quick Attack and they are going to over farm in this matchup. So potentially running the double debuffing moves of Close Combat and Wild Charge. So here, we capitalize, we go for the Hyper Beam and we connect. We waste all of their energy as we completely one-shot the Zacian there. And then we're able to catch a Dark Pulse onto our own Evelsal. So we are playing really well so far in this battle the opponent is probably very frustrated we now go for a dark pulse here we didn't farm to the potential focus blast but the opponent uses their shield anyways as they are very scared after seeing their first pokemon go down with basically 100 energy we go for a second dark pulse there they will commit to the full dragon breath farm down which is not ideal but we did bank a side strike before we swapped and caught that move onto eveltal so now we grab the final shield from this dialga we can probably let this move go through and we do and put it all on Meloetta to sweep this game now we've got to be wary of a potential catch there so we don't throw the side shock straight away I'm not sure who wins CMP anyway so maybe we would have lost there but the opponent goes for the catch we hold on to the energy bit of an awkward time to throw our charge move there as they do get the snarl through but it doesn't matter hyper beam did so much damage it puts them into range where we can easily quick attack farm them down and we should come out with a side shock loaded to throw into the Dialga coming back in and from this range Psyshock will be taking out the Dialga and we take that game so into the next game we see shiny shadow Mewtwo into a shiny ho -Oh. so I wonder if we're gonna go straight for the hyper beam once again here that was very satisfying in that first battle but no the opponent actually goes for a brave bird straight away probably gonna dip into a different Pokemon and here they come in with a Palkia so Palkia you don't see typically in the open master league it is still a very strong Pokemon but compared to other Pokemon like Dialga and Giratina it's maybe not the best dragon type here they go for an Aquatel and hopefully we can go for a full quick attack farm down just before they make it to the next Arcatel, and that is clutch for us. They come back in with the Ho-Ho. We're going to go for a Hyper Beam. This is going to do so much damage if it does connect, which it does. And now it looks like we're both going to go for the Fast Move Farm Down. The opponent banks a ton of energy, and we're able to react quick enough and go for that Hyper Beam straight away into a Xerneas that comes in. And now we can come in with our Shadow Mewtwo. We can go straight for the Side Strike, grabbing the first shield from the opponent, and the opponent will be able to throw just before we make it to the next Side Strike. So good timing by the opponent there. We're now going to over farm in this matchup, throwing just before they make it to the next Moonblast or close combat. And Psy Strike grabs the final shield from the opponent. But at this point, they've got two Pokemon that have like one HP remaining. We take them out with the Meloetta, take out the ho -Oh as well, and we're able to take that game. Into next game, we see a... Sh uh, sorry, Shiny Shadow Mewtwo into a Lugia. So we save swap into our Meloetta here and the opponent is choosing to stay in this matchup. We're going to go straight for that Hyper Beam and this won't do quite as much damage as we've seen already because Lugia is incredibly bulky in the Open Master League. But here we are going to see an Aero Blast coming through. We barely hang on, but we won't make it to another charge move. So they do get the full Dragon Tail farm down. We come in with the Veltal here and we are going to let this move go through. This is just going to be a Sky Attack, which we do comfortably live. And now can we go for a full snarl farm down? Yes, we can. And we come out with, I think, 100 energy here. We go straight for a hyper beam into Xerneas coming in. Typically, they do resist everything there, but that does so much damage. And now they've got a double fairy backline here. So we can go for the side strike. Honestly, possibly could have gone for hyper beam once again. And the opponent does let it go through, but it doesn't really matter. I think we should be able to fast move farm them down from this range. We go for side strike number two, grabbing the shield. And we are starting to use our own shields now. They go for a wild charge. And this makes this matchup a lot more comfortable. Because now they're going to quant debuff their defense. We will easily get the side strike farm down. Or sorry, the psycho cut farm down. And go for another side strike into Xerneas. Coming back in. Side strike will grab the final shield from the opponent. And we're going to make an unnecessary catch here. Catching the move onto Ari Veltal. 
They go for the Moon Blast, they actually undercharge it. Good play by the opponent, but we make it to the Dark Pulse anyways. And even if we didn't, we had that Psy Strike loaded. We were just sort of playing with our food there and we're able to take that game. Into the next game, we see a shiny Rayquaza in the lead. So we are going to go for the side Strike straight away here. Not the best timing, but we want to throw before they debuff our attack. So I do like that play. I do fully agree with it. And we swap into Meloetta to catch the charge move. I believe Meloetta is going to be significantly more bulky than a Shadow Mewtwo. So that's why we do tank a lot of the moves onto our Meloetta. The opponent's going to go for a charge move here. They go for the Moon Blast and we still survive that. So really good matchup awareness there, knowing that we don't have to shield it. And we go for the Hyper Beam, but once again, we faint just as we make it to the Psy Shock, which is really unfortunate. But now we're going to come in with the Shiny Shadow Mewtwo, go for a Shield there. They go for the Moon Blast, they don't get the debuff, and now we're going to come out with nearly a Psy Strike loaded to throw into what's probably going to be the Rayquaza coming back in. So we go for it straight away here, and this Psy Strike will be grabbing the final Shield from the opponent, and now we swap into our Eveltal here. And this is unfortunate, the opponent throws on alignment there, well, I mean... Three turn against three turn moves. They couldn't do anything else about it there. But we knew we were going to lose CMP. So we didn't throw straight away. But now, unfortunately, the opponent ends up throwing on CMP once again. So now we are double debuffed. This Hyper Beam won't be enough to take out the Rayquaza. And now it just depends. What do they have in the back? It's a Landorus there. So the opponent is going to go for a charge move straight away. This is going to have to be a superpower, which it is. Which means they're going to debuff their defense. And now a Psy Strike should be enough damage from this range to one-shot the Landorus and we've got a second stri side strike loaded to throw back into Rayquaza coming back in and we're able to take that game. So into the next game, we see Shiny Shadow Mewtwo into Heatran. Now, the awkward thing about running Hyper Beam on all three Pokemon is that we don't really have an awful lot of damage to throw up against these steel type Pokemon here as everything is resisted apart from the Snarl and the Dark Pulse on your Veltal there. So we go for the side Strike, grabbing the shield as we did farm up to a potential Focus Blast and now they can easily let the next move go through but once again we catch onto our Meloetta and you can see the Magma Storm doesn't really do too much damage here. Now in this matchup honestly we could be running Dazzling Gleam so I think we should just throw straight away because it's very likely that they're going to shield anyways. So we go for the Hyper Beam and they do shield it up so that is unfortunate. But now we're going to come back in with the Mewtwo. Unfortunately, they will outpace us to the charge move here. And I'm wondering, after a breaking swipe debuff, is this side strike going to be enough to take them out? But yes, it does still take them out from that range. And now, unfortunately, they do barely outpace us to the charge move. Magma Storm takes us out. We come in with a Veltal, but they've got a Shadow Metagross in the back. And this is probably best case scenario for us. Meter Mash going to do a ton of damage, but we farm to 100 energy. Going to go for the Dark Pulse, taking out the Metagross. And a second Dark Pulse should be enough damage from this range to take out the Heatran. And we're able to take that game. Into the next game, another Rayquaza in the lead. So gonna play this probably the same as last time. Go for a side strike straight away, making sure we get off the charge move. But no, actually, we're gonna over farm in this matchup here. They go for the breaking swipe, and I wonder if we're gonna full send a hyper beam. Nope, doesn't look like it, unfortunately. But this could be an ice beam here, so we do grab a shield from the opponent. So it still works out quite well for us there, and we do end up throwing on the correct timing as well. So maybe that is the better play up against Rayquaza in the lead. Now here we bait out a Kyogre. Not ideal for us here. We don't have anything that can hit for super effective damage. But likewise, Kyogre isn't going to hit for super effective damage up against any of our Pokemon. Unfortunately, we lose the CMP tie here up against the Kyogre. So we're going to let Meloetta go down. Now they're fairly low, but it's still quite a, a risky fast move farm down from this range and it looks like they denied us a fast move there which is really awkward they go for the surf can we get the snarl farm down it doesn't look like it so we swap into mewtwo and we barely miss out on the psycho cut farm down that is really unfortunate i think if we got that snarl through then we definitely would have taken them out and not had to use a final shield there but we go for a side strike into rayquaza coming back in we can now go for another side strike but unfortunately this is not going to do too much damage we grab the final shield there which is nice for us but we don't have that much energy on our Eveltal here. We need to make it to back-to-back -back moves and I think Dialga was barely going to outpace us so we do concede the match. Into the next game we see another Dialga 
this time in the lead here. And once again, not running focus fast, not ideal for us, but we should be farming up to the potential focus fast. We don't. I think that was probably one fast move short there. But then we swap. We catch the move onto Meloetta once again. So very nice play there. They come in with a Ho-Oh. And can we land a Hyper Beam in this matchup? It looks like we will be able to as they did swap in. So very unlikely to go for that Brave Bird straight away. And now they're going to go for a charge move. They did farm to 100 energy. We're going to just fully let Meloetta go down. Come in with the Mewtwo here. And we can shield once and fully Psychic Cut farm them down. Come out with a ton of loaded energy. So even though we've only got resisted charge moves to throw into the Dialga, we should be able to take them out with two side strikes here. So they are extreme range where probably one side strike will put them into farm down range. So we go for it there, grabbing the shield. And then we go for another side strike. It looks like they made a catch there. And they did. They catch onto their own shiny Mewtwo, which is unfortunate for us. But we've got a very good response. And unless they're running Ice Beam or maybe Thunderbolt, then we should be looking very good in this matchup there as we do tank a Shadow Ball very comfortably. We're actually choosing not to throw whatsoever. I really like this play because now we will be able to fully Snarl, farm them all the way down and come out with two Dark Pulses loaded. So doesn't matter how much energy the Dialga has, they did not have 100 energy. So we can go straight for back-to-back -back Dark Pulses. The first one grabbed the shield, the second one takes out the Dialga and we take that game. So into the next game, we see another ho in the lead. So let's see if we can land a Hyper Beam in this matchup. They are going to over farm. We could have full sent the Hyper Beam there, but we choose not to. We go for the side strike and the opponent lets it go through. But we do make a very nice catch onto our Meloetta, catching a Brave Bird. They're actually choosing to stay in this matchup there. They do make it to another charge move. So we're going to use a shield, but we will be able to fully quick attack farm them down. So instead, the opponent swaps into their Dialga. Now, once again, only resisted charge moves, but Hyper Beam does 50% of that Dialga's health. But they do get a very nice Dragon Breath farm down. We can now come in with the Mewtwo, over farm just a tiny bit, go for the side strike, grab the shield from the opponent, and it was a CMP tie. So perfect, un uh, sorry, perfect over farm there from the Black Luffy. We're now going to go for another side strike here. We are getting into range where they can fully Dragon Breath farm us down, but the opponent lets the Dialga go down. And once again, they've got a Mewtwo in the back. This is looking great for our Evil Tool, but let's see what charge move this Mewtwo is running. They're running Focus Fast, that does a ton of damage. But it looks like we will be able to outpace them to the next charge move there if they're five psycho cuts away. And we do make it to the next Dark Pulse just one turn before they make it to a side strike. We take out the Mewtwo and we are able to snarl, farm down the ho -Oh and take that game. So into the next game, we see a Groudon in the lead. So fairly neutral lead matchup here. And the opponent is going to choose to stay in this matchup as well. We go for a side strike here. This is going to do a ton of damage to the Groudon. We grab the first shield. And then we swap into Eveltal, trying to catch a Precipice Blades. They end up throwing anyway. Fire Punch, really not going to do too much here. And now they swap into a Rayquaza. So... I don't agree with this. We go for the Hyper Beam on the CMP tire, which is unfortunate. And we let it go through as well. So they will be able to fully Dragon Tail farm us down. And Hyper Beam just doesn't do enough damage there after they debuff us. So not the best play. I think going for Dark Pulses probably would have been better. We would have got one off before they got to the Breaking Swipe. And potentially a second one would have taken them out. But here we're able to get a very nice Quick Attack farm down. We swap straight away back into the Mewtwo. And the opponent swaps into their Groudon. So we're going to use a Shield here. They do bait with a Fire Punch, which is unfortunate. And at this point... We double shield and double fire punch bait. That is so unfortunate here. But now we go for a side strike. Side strike nearly takes them out there. And we do get the psycho cut farm down. We can go for one extra psycho cut. Go for another side strike. Grabbing the shield from the opponent. Making it to yet another side strike. Shadow Mewtwo is just incredibly spammy. Well, I mean, that's not specific to just the Shadow Mewtwo. Of course, regular Mewtwo gets to the charge moves at the exact same rate. But we come in with the Meloetta. And once again, we make it to the Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam is resisted but it nearly takes them out one more quick attack does the job and we're able to take that game so into the next game we see another Zacian in the lead the last one over farmed way too much and got completely one shot by a hyper beam this time they do throw straight away so probably running the play rough no they go for wild charge and now they swap into a Evolutal there so very nice play by the opponent trying to make a catch but we full send the hyper beam and now we swap into our own Evolutal here and we are probably going to go for a full Snarl farm down. They go for Dark Pulse there, which is very interesting. Not sure why they wouldn't go for a Focus Blast or Hyper Beam or 
uh, Oblivion Wing, I think that's the other charge move that I can learn there, but I don't know. We're now going to go for a Hyper Beam into the Pokemon, coming back in. It is the Zacian, that does so much damage, and we do make it to a Dark Pulse as well, which is amazing for us, as this will be grabbing a shield from the opponent, but it looks like they're going to farm two back-to-back -back charge moves before eventually throwing here into the Eveltal. They go for the Wild Charge, it takes us out. We come in with Meloetta, and we're actually going to let this move go through, as the Wild Charge doesn't do too much damage, and now they come in with the Alga. This is a bit of an awkward matchup once again. I think we should over farm in this matchup here. Bait like we potentially got a Dazzling Gleam, but we come in with our shiny Shadow Mewtwo, and hopefully with the Psycho Cut damage adding up over time, we should put them into range where a Psy Strike will be enough damage to take them out, but it's going to be close. We go for the first one, grabbing the final shield from the opponent. We make it to a second strike, Psy Strike, but I just don't think this will be enough damage there. It isn't enough damage. They get the full Dragon Breath farm down. We come in with the Meloetta, and unfortunately, it's not looking too good for us. They go for the Iron Head, which we do actually live, but they get the Dragon Breath farm down, and we do unfortunately lose that game. But into the next game, another Ho-Oh in the lead. So going to stay in this lead matchup. I really want to land another Hyper Beam, or at least see one landing. I'm not, I'm not playing these battles, so I don't know why I said it like that. But here we once again play out exactly the same, swapping and catching the Sacred Fire this time onto our Meloetta. They do get the attack drop, which is unfortunate for us. They bank a ton of energy, and then they swap into Zacian. But we're going to go straight for that Hyper Beam, dealing big damage there. And the opponent is going to overfarm in this matchup, allowing us to make it to a side shock they will be able to fully fast move farm us down but no they actually let it go through and they fully sacrifice the Zacian there interesting play by the opponent we come back in with our shiny shadow Mewtwo unfortunately this ho is absolutely loaded on energy this time they don't get the debuff but we don't throw straight away I think that might be a mistake here but they go for the brave bird and they swap into Dialga once again Dialga has been very tricky for our backline to deal with but we go for a side strike there the opponent did call the bait there we go for another side strike and now we do finally grab a shield from the opponent and we're going to swap into a Veltal. We make it to the Dark Pulse before they make it to a Draco Meteor. Dark Pulse doesn't quite take out the Dialga from that range and this might be a Draco Meteor. It is. It takes out the Veltal but we get the Psycho Cut farm down and we should be able to outpace the Ho-Oh to one final charge move and this side Strike will be enough damage to take out the Ho-Oh and we take that game. So into the next game, we see Shiny Shadow Mewtwo into yet another Ho-Oh. This time, this is going to be the Apex Purified Ho-Oh, which does look very nice. We are... Once again, not going to go for the Hyper Beam. I really want us to just full send the Hyper Beam here, but I'm guessing the Black Luffy would have looked into the matchup and potentially Hyper Beam wouldn't quite take them out there, so maybe not quite worth it. But now we will be able to full send a Hyper Beam into the Zacian, nearly one-shotting them. We should be able to live any charge move here, so we will no shield it. It is the close combat. We get the quick attack farm down. Very nice play here. And we are going to see the opponent wait out the switch clock, come back in with the Ho-Oh, and they do throw pretty much straight away. Way. So we're going to let the move go through. Sacred Flyer plus plus doesn't make a difference for the Go Battle League, but Sacred Flyer plus plus does have a very nice damage boost for raids. We go for the side strike there, grabbing the shield from the opponent. We are going to shield up the Brave Bird, and they're going to swap into another Fairy type. So it looks like the same team as last time. Unfortunately, they barely outpace us here before we make it to that Hyper Beam. Hopefully, we can still land it here as we're going to full send the Hyper Beam. And from this range, Hyper Beam will be taking out the Xerneas. And now we should be able to outpace the Ho-Oh as well to a side Strike. And from this range, the side Strike will barely not take out the Ho-Oh. But we can come in, get the Snarl Farm down with the Veltal, and we're able to take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.